popular way to edit in Premiere Pro is with stacked timelines, also known as pancake timelines. This is when you have two or more timeline panels stacked on top of each other, allowing you to edit from one sequence to another. This allows you to organize clips from a scene, group B-roll, or pull selects from directly on a timeline. You can also use split markers to label your clips, and use spacing to further organize your clips in a way that makes the most sense for your workflow. In this example, I'm editing a narrative film with multiple angles and multiple takes. I want to be able to quickly see what angles I have and how many takes of each angle. I've put a small space in between each take and a large space between each new angle. Each angle is labeled with split markers so that I can quickly reference what type of shot it is. Close up, medium, insert shot, and a short description on what happens in the shot. The empty sequence below will be my actual edit. I'll close these two timelines so that I can demonstrate how to set up the pancake timelines. Premiere's interface is made up of panels. Each one of these windows is referred to as a panel. Sequences are also panels. You can set up pancake timelines by opening two sequences and then grabbing the tab of one of the sequences and dropping on either the upper or lower edge highlight. There are multiple ways to edit between timelines. You can add edits and simply drag and drop clips from one timeline to another. You can copy and paste selected clips from one timeline to another. Of course, you can use Command C and Command V. Or you can mark in and out points and use track targeting to copy and paste specific tracks from one sequence to another. In this case, I'm deselecting audio one so that only the in and out point of video track one will paste onto my edit timeline. Another way to use the pancake timeline method is to load a sequence in the source monitor. Instead of double clicking a sequence to open it, you can drag the sequence from the project panel directly into the source monitor. From here we can click the wrench icon in the source monitor and select Open Sequence in Timeline. The sequence opens in the Timeline panel and you'll notice the words Source Monitor appear next to the sequence name in the timeline. The playhead is also red as an extra visual indicator that this is your source sequence and not your edit sequence. From here, click and drag the Sequence tab onto the upper or lower edge highlight to create a pancake timeline. You now have the ability to add an in and out point and simply hit the insert or overwrite key, and that section of the clip will appear in your edit timeline. One important note is for this method to properly work, you'll want to make sure that the insert or overwrite sequences as nests or individual clips button is deselected on your edit sequence. By deselecting this option, you'll be inserting or overwriting the individual clips within the sequence instead of as a nested segment from the source monitor sequence. If you insert clips as a nested sequence, any changes that you make to the source monitor sequence will also affect the nest in your edit sequence. As long as this button is deselected, you'll be fine. You can see just how quick and easy editing can be by using the pancake timeline method. It's a great way to organize and edit footage without having to continuously load clips from bins. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to Inside Hollywood's Cutting Rooms on the Adobe Creative Cloud channel for more Premiere Pro tutorials and cutting room conversations.